we're making a double-sided pot holder that allows you to have just one single glove, but both of your hands can go in it. Very useful for Christmas. You can take your big roast out of the oven when it's ready and you won't get any burns or anything dangerous even coming close to you. Particularly because it has this section here, it actually also protects your arms a bit and I love that. It uses a special kind of wadding on the inside. This helps to protect you even more than regular wadding would from that really strong heat from your oven. This is a year round make, but this one is made with Christmas fabric, which means it's Christmassy, but absolutely you can make this at any time of the year. You're going to need to cut out all of your pieces of fabric using the template that I have available on my website. This is a print at home pattern template, like all of my other patterns. It's digital and you can print it using regular A4 or US letter size paper, then cut it out and stick it together at home. There are actually quite a few pieces to cut out, but they are very simple pieces. You will need fabric for the front and the back of the main piece, as well as extra fabric for the top sections of the gloves themselves where your hands go in. You will need bias binding, which I'm gonna show you how to make yourself out of just regular fabric, quilting fabric. You will also need a special kind of wadding called Insulbrite. And this has aluminium, in the center of it to help it to not conduct heat through to your hands. It's really important when selecting all of your fabrics and your thread that everything that you use is a natural fiber like cotton or linen. If you use something that is polyester based, including your thread, then it could melt when coming into contact with hot things, which is literally the point of what we're making. There is a little rectangular box on the end of your pattern piece. This is to indicate that the pattern piece needs to be cut on the fold. The first two pattern pieces are for the main base fabric. So place them on the fold and then your pattern piece on top. Then you're going to cut all the way around through both layers of that single piece of fabric, leaving it connected at the fold line. Then you're going to fold your pattern piece up so that it is only one little part showing with the curved edge. This is gonna be where your hands are. So you're going to cut these out, but instead of cutting it on the fold, you're just gonna cut it flat. You need to make sure that you have four of these cut out. So two main pieces of fabric that are long, four smaller pieces of fabric so that you've got place for your hands. Then again, either on the fold or cut one half and then the other or print this twice, you need to cut out your wadding. So you need to do your insule bright and you need to do your regular cotton wadding. You don't have to have the regular cotton wadding, but it does help to make sure that your hands are definitely safe and comfortable from hot things that you're trying to hold. It's often also recommended that you actually do two layers, but I have asbestos hands, I definitely don't need that. So hopefully you won't either, but again, always make sure that you check everything yourself. You're going to base together all of the long pieces. So you're going to start with one of your waddings and you're going to baste. I baste using a spray adhesive, but you can also use uh, basting safety pins or you can hand base with thread. You're going to baste your wadding, one of them, to another base of fabric and then you're going to do the other side. Do the exact same thing. I tend to work one side and then the other. And then you're going to baste the two waddings together, which is gonna make this big sandwich of fabric and wadding, which is four layers deep. 
then you need to quilt this together. It's best to use a walking foot when you're quilting anything, but if you don't have one, you can use a regular foot. Just go real slow. It's also likely that this is going to pucker in some places. That's just what happens with sewing machines and their feet and how they kind of smush lots of layers of fabric together. If your sewing machine is really struggling to get through all of those layers of fabric, this isn't a very large piece. So you can also choose to just base stitch around the outer edge of all of those layers to hold them together. Or again, you can actually base them with cotton thread uh, and, and that can be your quilting that goes through all of those layers instead of trying to force it through your sewing machine. This can absolutely be a hand stitch project. No problems at all. Hand stitching is incredibly strong, often stronger than machine stitching despite popular belief on the matter. It is actually much stronger and it is one lovely mindful activity to do. Once our main pieces are taken care of we need to create these pockets or mitten parts for our hands to go. We're going to take two of our glove pieces, put them right sides together, wrong sides facing out and stitch just along the straight edge at the top, that short straight edge. Once that's stitched, we're going to go back to our iron and we're going to press this so that the right sides are facing out and we've got a nice crisp edge at the top there. And then this is doesn't need any kind of binding to hold those stitches together. However, I am going to use a contrast binding on mine. You don't have to though, because it has a lining. If you are not using any kind of bias tape or anything at the top of your pocket pieces, then you can just move on to the next step of basting these things together. But if you are, then you need to stick with me so that we can actually make our bias binding. Bias binding is essentially strips of fabric that are cut on a 45 degree angle. Rather than being cut on the straight grain or the cross grain, it's the bias grain. So yeah, across the side that way. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up my fabric and do my first base cut on the end, my first piece, and that's cut on the bias. My quilting ruler actually has a guide for how to be at 45 degrees exactly. So I'm gonna use that to help me be really accurate with this. After I've done my first cut, then I'm going to fold my fabric in half just to make it a bit more manageable. It is quite a wide piece of fabric when you open it up, particularly on that angle, and it really is hard to cut out if you don't do this. So I'm going to continue to cut strips. Mine are two and a half inches wide. Two and a half inches is just over six centimeters. Most quilting rulers and quilting paraphernalia comes in Imperial much to my frustration, but that's what it is. So that's why I am using quilting terms for this because it is technically a quilting project. Once I have enough bias strips cut out for my entire project, I need to actually sew them together so that I create a large bias strip. For those mitten pieces, you don't have to worry about that, but for the outside, it's likely that you'll have to sew them together. Take your pieces to the sewing machine and you're going to place them in a cross with the right sides together, wrong sides out. The main pieces, the long pieces of your bias are going to be away from the sewing machine and the short ends that you're putting together are towards the sewing machine. This will make sure that you are sewing along the correct part of your bias binding. You're going to sew from the top of your X where it meets to the bottom in a straight line. It should look sort of like a diagonal line across. And then once you've done that and you've checked <laughs> that it actually folds back into place, then you can cut off the excess. Once you've finished cutting your strips, then we need to get the iron out again. It's time to press. We're going to start by pressing it in half lengthways. So you're going to have a very, very long line of pressing to do. Once that is pressed in half, then you're going to get those outer edges and you're going to fold them together into the center, into that first fold line that will help you keep track of where the center is. And then you're going to press both of those down to the center. So it will become in half of what its original size was. Then you need to Continue to fold that in. So then you have this little strip that is folded in half to the center and then in half again. And then that is what will cover up your edges around the side and will make sure that everything is contained and there's no raw seam sticking out. 
because it's on the bias, it will be able to curve around the ends of your oven glove mitt thing, pot holder. It'll be able to curve around the ends of the oven mitt. We're going to attach our bias tape to the little mitt parts first. These haven't been attached to the main section, they're their own things. You're just going to clip a strip across that top edge that we already sewed and then sew that down. It's important that when you're sewing it, that you're making sure that you're catching both the top and the bottom of that bias binding along with the actual mitt part itself. Once you've finished putting the bias binding on the mitts, if you're choosing to do that, then you're going to base them into place on top of your main pieces. So you need to line up that curved edge along the side for the mitts and the main base. And then you're just going to based around the curve from top to top. It's just to hold it properly in place before you put the binding on, which is the actual main construction. Pin your bias binding or clip it all the way around the outside of your oven mitt across like the mitt parts and that center section, you need to make sure that you leave a section on one of the sides, the long sides, that isn't stitched down so that we can seamlessly join our bias tape together. You also need to make sure that you have some tails left over. So make sure that there is extra left of your bias tape before you start stitching it to the mitt itself. Once you have gotten around to the other side again, Make sure that you leave a fair bit of space, about 15 centimeters, which is, I don't know, like six inches, maybe five, where you don't stitch the bias tape down and you've got lots of overhang from both sides of the bias tape. To create that seamless, you can't tell where it starts and ends finish for binding, you need to overlap those long ends by the same amount that they are wide. So for mine, that is two and a half inches or six centimeters. So I'm gonna make sure that those two tails, they overlap each other by only two and a half inches. Then you're going to open them out and place them right sides together, same as we did before when we were just doing it in strips. And you're going to sew across the diagonal, again, the same as we did before. It's a little bit awkward and hard to see when I film it because there's so much bulk of the other wadding and everything getting in the way. Once you have sewn it together and you've triple checked that it actually does fold out smoothly, you're going to trim away all of that excess from the seam and then you simply need to fold it down and it should then finish off that final edge of your mitt and you will barely even be able to tell where you started and finished. stitch across this section as well, all through all of the layers, and then that's actually it. That's, that's your entire mitt, all done. Thank you so much for watching these videos. I really appreciate your support. Thank you for sticking around if you're still here at the end. Make sure that you go and check out all the other videos in this playlist that I have made for this Christmas season. A lot of these can be used at any time of the year, depending on the kind of fabric, yarn, colors you choose, but they are also really great as Christmas projects. Yeah, again, these are great for year round. They're pretty easy to make. The only thing is you have to make bias binding for it, which goes around this curve. That can be a little bit tricky, but it's also a really great skill to learn if you don't have it already in your arsenal. So, you know, give it a go. Thank you so much for watching and uh, see you later.